Metal legends Iron Maiden are here in New Zealand for two sellout concerts. The British band is one of the most successful heavy metal bands in the history of rock music, of course. In fact, today they can rightly claim to be Britain's best live act. Last night they beat Coldplay and The Verve, who Sam told me had reformed, I didn't know that, to that title at the prestigious Brit Awards. Clayton Anderson spoke to lead singer Bruce Dickinson about music awards and what he does for a day job, really. This morning, Bruce Dickinson woke up here with another notch in his studded belt. And I was one of the first to congratulate him on winning Best Live Act at this year's Brit Awards. And the winner is Iron Maiden. It's a great honour to accept this Brit Award. The great thing about being, you know, having this one particular Brit Award is that, of course, it was not voted for by people in the music business. It's, you know, it wasn't like I'd like to thank the Academy or anything else like that. You know, this is voted for actually by fans. Yes, the fans made Iron Maiden. Over the past couple of decades, they've sold 70 million albums. Dickinson says he's seen three generations of fans grow up on their music. These are all young kids. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's you know, some guys like my age, you know, down the back, you know, sitting there drinking beer, going, oh, I remember when I saw these guys in 1982, mate, you know. Uh, but for, for most of the kids who are down there, it's brand new and it's really exciting. Um, and that's what makes it really exciting for us. Because, frankly, if we were, you know, uh, going out on stage and we saw mirror images of us staring back at us in the, you know, in the audience, we'd go, God, who are these old codgers? Who let these guys in, you know? Um, but, you know, you see a bunch of 16-year-old kids and it's just, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's a sort of musical Viagra, you know? Iron Maiden touched down in Auckland last night in their own private 757 airliner, personally piloted by Dickinson. Yep, flying planes is Bruce Dickinson's day job. Seriously, when he's not fronting Iron Maiden, he's a commercial pilot for Australia's Airlines. The one thing I liked when I started flying airplanes for a living was that when, uh, when, you, walk, when you walk away from the airplane and you close the door, that's it. Job done. Your job is over. It's over. It's done. Nobody phones you up and goes, oh, you've got an interview at three. No, job done. And I thought, wow, what an amazing thing. People have lives like that. There are people in the world who shut the door and go, you know, no, no, that's it, I've done my job. And that's it, you know, till tomorrow. And um, the, the one thing with, with rock and roll is that you're, 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 you're never off duty. Bruce Dickinson has built an impressive resume outside of rock and roll. Apart from being a pilot, he's also written two novels and a screenplay. And don't challenge him to a duel, he's a brilliant fencer, once one of the best in England. How can a rock and roll wild man be so well rounded? His wake up call came back in 1982, after Iron Maiden's first hit album. The last night of the tour in Japan, and I was, I was pretty drunk, and I was crawling on my hands and knees down the hotel room corridor and uh, I was really hungry so I was having those old room service trays outside I was like mm, it's toast mm, I want a bit of that mm, mm. and I thought what are you doing you turned into some feral critter you know <laughs> I said is this the rest of your life is this like Groundhog Day you know and I thought wow mm, no you're gonna you know if you're gonna survive the next I don't know five years, ten years, I don't know, with, with, with something intact. Um, you've got to figure out that there's some alternative outside of this world. But being in the band is what keeps this 50-year-old on top of the world. That's life, you know, it's great. I and mean, it, it certainly makes you feel alive. You know, you definitely know you're alive when you're on stage in front of 12,000 people.